Good evening. This is Rob Bell, and we are about to start another episode of Getting the Record Straight. This is the Truth to Power segment, so we want to talk some politics, talk some uh, social, social justice, other issues that particularly impact my people, African American Africans here in America. And I um, have to say, first of all, stay safe. Uh, this coronavirus thing is crazy. It's getting more crazy. And, of course, we're led by a person and a group of people who are completely um, moronic and out of their minds. And it's hard to really watch TV anymore. And the news, just uh, what these folks are about, is just mind-boggling and uh, frightening. Um, I want to start off by just going over what this stimulus, coronavirus stimulus bill has in it and maybe talk a little bit about what it doesn't and then revisit just for a few uh, what I've been talking about in terms of just kind of a overarching theme and where this country, where the uh, leadership is and has been and just that, you know, uh, as I said um, last time, you know, we're really dealing with some insane people. And, um, you know, we can talk about moderation. We can talk about uh, not being, uh, you know, being uh, cooperative and negotiating and that kind of thing. But we are dealing with some really sick folks. And uh, I don't know why it's so difficult for people to get that. But as I said last time, uh, the fact that we normalize and we allow and, and, and just, um, you know, uh, take for granted what folks are doing and the evil and criminality of what they're doing and what they're about. Um, and we just, uh, uh, you know, ignore it virtually. And it's going to come back to bite us. Uh, that said, let's deal a little bit with this coronavirus stimulus uh, bill. Evidently, I think it was last night, uh, very early in the morning, um, uh, I believe that they voted and agreed upon that. I don't know that the president signed it yet or that the House has agreed on it. I know the Senate did, but uh, I'm not sure whether the House has signed off on it or what the exact process is at this point, or the status is at this point. This is, um, we're Thursday evening around 7.30. So the last time I actually checked the news was a few hours ago. But from what I could gather right now, we're talking about direct payments to individuals uh, in the amount of $1,200, uh, somewhere around $250 billion for unemployment insurance and that I guess weekly or biweekly amount has been raised, and uh, it can also be for people who are individual contractors, gig workers, I believe. So 250 billion there, 350 billion in loans for small businesses, and of course 500 billion in aid for hard hit industries, and. Uh, Fifty billion for the airlines, hundred and thirty billion in aid to hospitals, and a hundred and fifty billion to help state and local governments. So that's a real broad outline um, that I've been able to uh, uh, glean. And um, again, the twelve hundred dollars for individuals is supposed to go to pretty much everyone, I think, who. Um, I don't know what the per exact parameters are. I think, as you, uh, I think at ninety nine thousand, if you're an individual making that much, just under a hundred thousand, I think you get cut off there, and it starts to decrease after seventy five thousand for an individual. Um, I think uh, I also uh, understand that immigrants and people who aren't, who don't have social security numbers or something like that, don't. Uh, um, are not in that uh, in that group that are that's going to receive the twelve hundred. Um, a lot of issues have been raised thus far, and that's why I'm saying I'm not sure this is going 
through the house yet or um, uh, so I'm gonna have to see tomorrow but anyway some of the concerns that I've heard are that 500 that it's not 500 billion that's going to the big businesses and big corporations it's actually that 500 billion is being leveraged to raise or to support another 4.5 trillion so that's what kind of money is being dropped on them on the major corporations uh, and there had been talk about as a result of the 500 billion that some industries or companies rather uh, that the federal government would get some equity uh, as a result of that in some of these firms and I understand that's been negated um, large, uh, with that money there's nothing preventing some of these large companies from buying other distressed companies and uh, you know there's a concern about consolidation uh, as a result of that um, <clears throat> after the term of the loan if a, a big company applies for some of this 500 billion they can use it after a year or after the term of the loan to actually buy back stock which was uh, you know uh, seriously challenged by uh, I know Bernie Sanders among others and I thought that had been nixed but evidently it's only been put, uh, a time limit has only been put on it and uh, big businesses don't have to keep people on the payroll the way the small businesses do who get the 350 billion in loans um, uh, so evidently the Democrats agreed to have some oh they, uh, there's an oversight panel but a lot of folks are saying you know what good is that going to do once the money gets out you know it's hard for people to get it to, to then go and get it again or try to uh, regain, re, regain it. <clears throat> so um, evidently it's a mixed bag, but the bottom line is that the big corporations and big banks really make out and uh, like bandits. So um, there's also, I think, uh, no health care or sick leave pay. Uh, and there's also a concern I've heard from some commentators and, and uh, union leaders about the housing support, rent forgiveness, um, that there's nothing in the, the, this bill that addresses those things. And evidently, um, some of the, of the people who I really uh, listen to and, and like in, in terms of politics have said is that because they coupled everything together, put everything in one bill, instead of separating the things out that um, individuals needed and maybe uh, voted on a smaller package that just addressed that, that uh, things would have been uh, far better in terms of negotiation because you don't have the threat of if you don't give me the big corporate, big bank stuff, then I won't give you, you know, for uh, individual workers and Mitch McConnell, devil that he is, um, he seems to play that game well, and um, but I don't know why um, politicians, uh, particularly the Democrats, continually fall for that instead of breaking you know segments of a bill up, making sure that they get out, you get as much in it as you can, and then get it out and moving, and the more complicated and controversial uh, issues, particularly as, as they relate to these big companies. That you take time and deal with that. Um, but like I said, um, what you're seeing out of some of these Republicans is just absolute madness. I'm sure you've seen um, uh, seen some uh, uh, film or, or uh, video on this guy who's the lieutenant governor of Texas and how he's like, you know, those uh, seniors will, you know, we'll take our chances and, uh, you know, have everybody get back to work and get back out in the community and socialize so that the economy can get, uh, can gain steam again. And if we happen to croak or catch the virus, you know, we'll be okay. And if we have to die, so be it. But America will be America and the economy will be strong again. And our grandchildren will be able to, um, to, to thrive. And I've got a grandchild and one on the way, so... Uh, but that's, I just think, totally sick and ignorant. But that's what we're dealing with. And if there's any 
you know, I keep bringing this up, and I know it's annoying to some folks, but, um, you know, evidence, evidence of that ignorance and um, nonsensical kind of thinking, uh, criminal kind of thinking is uh, what's going on with this, um, <clears throat> with Venezuela. They have just, uh, the, the uh, Justice Department has just indicted the president of Venezuela and calling him a, a drug trafficker. And they're basically setting up a scenario, uh, as they did with Noriega, Manuel Nor Noriega in Panama, where they came in, killed several thousand people, more than half of them civilians. Uh, the former CIA asset, Manuel Noriega, and scooped him up. Like I said, had uh, uh, slaughtered uh, at least 2,000, and I think that's a, um, a low estimate. And uh, they said that, you know, uh, most of the people, the vast majority were civilians, that basically destroyed a neighborhood. And uh, this was someone who used to run drugs and uh, weapons for the CIA, but he had fallen out of favor with them. And uh, so they went in and attacked in Panama. And they're, I think they're setting up a similar kind of scenario. Who knows what? But this is what the uh, administration will do. And this is what both sides of the aisle seem to be okay with, uh, including the sanctions that, you know, I've talked about the last couple of shows, sanctions against Iran, sanctions against, obviously, Venezuela. Now they're pointing at, at Nicaragua. Meanwhile, Cuba is sending doctors all over the place and uh, helping out as best they can. And um, in a time, you know, it's not only a pandemic, but it's a time when everyone should be coming together all over the world to help one another and to, and to see this thing through and to get through it. And if one group has, one country has good ideas and it's done it, oh my gosh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, I meant to uh, turn that off before I started. Oh, my gosh. So anyway, um, and so there we are. We're, you know, busy um, threatening and sanctions and uh, all kinds of sick uh, behavior instead of helping the lead to bring people together and uh, do what's necessary to help uh, deal with this virus. And um, what more can you say? But that's indicative of the leadership here. And as I said, Democrats and Republicans are both um, allowing that to happen, and it is going to come back to bite us. Um, I will probably say a little bit more about this, but uh, not, I don't think next show, but the show after, I definitely want to start getting into where black leadership in this country comes down on all this and what's their impact been and how they've been impacted. And uh, so we really need to kind of start discussing um, the state of black leadership here in this country. So with that in mind, I'm going to sign off. This has been Getting the Record Straight, Truth to Power, and um, enjoy the uh, rest of your evening, and please stay safe. Thank you.